I'm Christine Dean, and this is Live from Studio A. And today we are very happy to welcome back Keith Sokola. Welcome, Keith. Good to be here. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, you have some fun things going on uh, the, since you were last here not too long ago, and we'll talk about those. But um, first I want to introduce the band that's with you today. Paul Jones playing pedal steel, Darren Bergsvin on guitar. We have Steve Netzel on bass and Owen Mann on drums. And let's have you start with a song. What do you want to get started with? This is a new one. It's called Moon Rising, Hold Me. Stay in your heart. Would you let my spirit free? Roam the valleys and the mountains, rivers and the sea. Hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me. 
Very nice. And uh, Keith, you said that was a new one. Uh, tell me about the inspiration behind that one. Uh, I, was, uh, I was watching my grandson, and he was kind of clingy that day, and he wanted me to hold him all the time. And went to rehearsal that night and kind of just started saying that line, hold me, hold me. It's a very alchemic line, you know. Um, and so this song evolved from that. Um, I was happened to be crossing the Mississippi River, and um, the line, oh, oh, mighty Mississippi, came to me when I was writing this song, so I knew I was on the right track. And that day, my grandson really liked when I said, hold me, hold me, hold me, hold me, and just having fun like that. And you kind of write a song, and as you get older in your lyrics and writing, you become more potent, so you can say less words. Really? That's good to know. Yeah. Um, and uh, so, how old is your grandson? Uh, he's uh, two and three quarters, and my other one's nine. So oh, nice. I, I have a, a, a teenage grandson as well. Wonderful. Um, and speaking of younger people, um, you are, have been back in Minnesota. You live in Arizona, right? Um, but you spend a lot of time back here in your home state. And uh, one of the things that you've been doing is working with high school students. Tell us about that. Well, yeah, I um, just completed uh, two pieces for high school band and junior high band, um, one called Electric 49, which features uh, um, the flute electric music and put to that melody, and one called Coco Pele Blues about um, cultural appropriation and intellectual copyright and such. And we introduce these um, to uh, bands all over the state, but the bands in Cloquet and Rochester, they recently pe performed the pieces, and I had them arranged um, by um, a couple of Eric Jarvett and uh, Riley. They did the arrangements for me um, and we did it through a, a state grant and now the high schools all around the state of Minnesota for the next few years will be playing these songs. Wonderful. And it was a wonderful experience working with the, the, um, the high school and junior high bands. Um, it was really fun. The kids were very respectful there are kids, young students, learning music. Some of them might play music f throughout their life, or some of them might not, but it'll always affect them. So it's a great experience. Well, and music is something that I, I think does have value, whether or not it is something you're going to do your whole life for kids. And so I think that's wonderful that you had a chance to work with that. So how did that process go of working with the kids on that? Were you teaching them the songs or well, what were you doing? Well, um, what happened was what, how it pro the, I was um, contacted by the uh, Minnesota uh, Native American Composers Consortium to um, compose two pieces. Um, and so the Kevin Hussett from the Cloquet um, high school band contacted me and uh, I worked with an arranger for a year, sent him my stuff and then he put it to the, um, 
he scored it to mm -hmm. the high school pieces. And mm -hmm. I went in a few days before the concerts and talked about the pieces and performed them with the kids. Yesterday at the Minnesota Music Educators Conference, uh, the Cloquet Band came down and we performed them at the Minneapolis uh, Convention Center for educators all around the state. And the band did really wonderful. It was a great experience. Oh, that is wonderful. Um, did, do, are any of your grandchildren that you mentioned uh, in, involved in music? Yeah, I think, I think it's important, you know, as a, a parent or a grandparent to let the music happen like love, you know. Mm -hmm. and, I mean, some people like get them lessons and things like that, but for me, it's like water. Was it like that for you when you were growing up? Because you wanted to be a musician pretty early, I think. I did, yeah, and, and uh, I found my way, you know, it's mm -hmm. like finding truth or something, you know, and I found it, I played in a trombone in the grade school band, and, and I remember playing the lowest note in a high school band, and it was a natural E, seventh position on the trombone, and I had to play it so loud, and I was a solo for only maybe four seconds or so, but my self-esteem rose from that moment on. I thought I was making a mistake, but I wasn't. And that's what I wanted to bring to these kids, that, that lifetime gift. Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Um, well, let's hear another song. What do you want to play next? Uh, you know, I, I didn't really rehearse the song with these, but we got a wonderful flute piece mm -hmm. that we, um, we kind of know. And so I'd like to play a okay. little bit of flute music for yeah. people of the Northland. And uh, last time that uh, Keith was here, we talked a little bit about an album that he made during the pandemic called Portals, which was a flute album. So, um, so All right. <laughs> Name. That's Keith Sacola live from Studio A. And we're happy to have you here today. And another thing that you've been up to since the last time we visited with you, you scored a, a movie. Tell me about that. Oh, it was uh, Lila Hale uh, directed it and put it together. And it's about a great Northland hockey player that we know the bass player played against <laughs> him. And uh, Henry Boucher, the electric Indian. And uh, he was a wonderful role model for us. I remember as a, a youth on the Iron Range, learning how to skate and things, and hearing and seeing him on, in a hockey tournament. You know, I was a, younger than him, so that was a flame. That was a light. And to be older and to be asked to put music to his biography was a great honor. And tell me a little more about Henry, because I'm not familiar. I'm, I'm well, not Henry was from War Road. Mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, he was a wonderful hockey player. Um, he led this war road to the uh, Minnesota State Championship. And uh, a little, what, 2A two, two, two school took on Edina, you know, big 5A, and they won. And he kind of became an underground hero for Minnesotans. 
in people, and he's touched a lot of people's life. I heard our bass player say today, but he was a wonderful person too. And um, we're kind of playing, you know, to honor him and uh, what he accomplished, but what he left for people. He left uh, inspiration. He left hope. Um, he left happiness for us. But he, he did it by, by being strong, by being dedicated, you know, to his craft and, and being naturally gifted like a lot of our people are in the Northland. And when you were thinking about those things, how did that translate into the music that you came up with? Well, you know, it was uh, Leela Hale. She, she, she was the director, and it was most of her visions. I gave her some soundtracks, like music soundtracks, some instrumentals, and I kind of said, pick which ones work, you know, which ones work with you. And it was a pleasure because, uh, you know, I gave them stuff that wasn't just Indian cars or the songs that I'm known for, but some of the soundtracks that dig deep into emotions and feelings and can be re really used for underscoring mm -hmm. so you don't interfere with the monologue or dialogue or just the feelings and things. And that's where portals comes in, that, um, that portals, that uh, place of, of interspecies communication, of pitch and language and everything like that. And, and film is a wonderful place for it. Mm -hmm. And uh, is the movie out yet? It's going to be shown here, um, I think, uh, at the end of this month and in March. But in the Native American month in November, it'll have this premiere around the North Country. And mm -hmm. hopefully we'll do some um, mm -hmm. touring with it. Some of the theaters are on there. May the North Shore up in Ely, um, places around in uh, the Northland. And, We'll go up to War Road. Our <laughs> bass player is going to put on his skates and he's going to demonstrate a little uh, Henry Boucher's moves. You know, it's going to be wonderful. <laughs> well, I look forward to learning okay. more about him. Yeah. That sounds great. So yeah. it sounds like you kind of uh, took music that you ha already had and kind of incorporated it into that soundtrack. Yeah, right? yeah. And mm -hmm. the magic was done with the PBS people and mm -hmm. the people down in the Twin Cities. Mm -hmm. Nice. It must feel good to be a part of that. Yeah, it does, yeah. to be part of this community, you know, part of our native community. Mm -hmm. But the Northland community, seems like we're getting more cohesive. Uh, we're getting stronger as people, too, you know, and realizing that the beauty of our land and of our, of our art and our, our people here in the mm -hmm. Northland. Yeah, so wonderful to have somebody celebrated yeah. that people like me, I did not know about him. So I'm also not a big sports fan, so that's part of it, yeah. but, but I'm excited to learn more about him. Yeah. That's, that's wonderful. Well, that's what we want, and that's what we want. People mm -hmm. like you opening that, that door, that, that dialogue that exists. Mm -hmm. you know? I mm -hmm. think um, people have to come to that point. You know, I always said you lead people to the point of self-discovery. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so what else have you been up to in the last year? It's been a, a, almost a year since we've chatted. Well, I've been, I, I went out to Philadelphia. I recorded a whole album out there, six, uh, seven, eight songs, a soundtrack in the studio at Drexel College. It was a wonderful experience. And they have a wonderful studio. I've been up to the Northland and I recorded some at Rich Ranson's mm -hmm. studio, up on Sparta Studio on the range, mm -hmm. down in Minneapolis. Uh, this last year I've been Everywhere is from Miami to <laughs> Seattle, mm -hmm. you know, from D.C. to San Francisco. Mm -hmm. um, up in Canada, too, from Vancouver and playing Toronto. Nice. And Winnipeg has been a really wonderful place to mm -hmm. be part of the community. And just been traveling and playing for our people, folk music, almost like the, um, in the traditions that people like Woody Guthrie or Bob Dylan have done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and it's nice, to, even in this age of the internet, that to go and reach out to people one-on-one -on -one personally and, and uh, reach them in yeah, person. Yeah, and I had some wonderful experience with Minnesota and mm -hmm. Midwestern um, bands all over the North America or mm -hmm. Turtle Island. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Nice. Um, so you've recorded some music, and is it going to be released? Um, yeah, I think soon, we're going to release it uh, maybe sometime later in the fall mm -hmm. and things like that. I got a bunch of songs and maybe enough for two albums now, but just kind of keep on recording, I think. Mm -hmm. And um, the recording industry and the music industry has changed tremendously with streaming and things like that. 
and a lot of musicians are discouraged from recording, but not me. I kind of <laughs> encouraged by it. Mm -hmm. kind of keep your songs out there, mm -hmm. um, keep that gift flowing. Mm -hmm. um, well, let's hear one more song. What do you want to? Well, do this is a, a song called Indian Cars. It all started <laughs> uh, when I was working for Linda. <laughs> <laughs> up in Hibbing, Minnesota. And, and this refer, we were uh, just, uh, our PBS North partners are going to have Keith on Native Report and uh, a great conversation with Linda Lagarde Grover. Um, that was fun to hear you catch up. So oh, yeah. you have that to look forward to. So this is a, a little finger picking style and we're gonna go into the Native uh, song called Indian Cars about the richness of being poor, <laughs> kind of like that, the irony situation that we're in. I remember one time I was in France and uh, playing it, and I was picking it like this, and a, a, a Delta player, from a black guy from the South says, Keith, that's just the Delta blues you're playing. <laughs> I've been riding in the Indian car, pounding the wheel in my brain. My dash is dusty, it's our expired. Please, Mr. Officer, let me explain. I got to make it to a powwow tonight. Singing 49 down by the riverside, looking for sugar, riding in my car. You're Flint tax five. Please, Mr. Officer, let me explain. I got to make it to a powwow tonight. We're singing 49 down by the riverside. Looking for a shoe. Riding in my Indian car. Let's ride out there, everybody. Ride. Christian, ride. Put on a dashboard, ain't got no spare. A feather from an eagle, ain't got no care. The road is empty, and my bottle of desire. Daylight is breaking, the sun touches fire. I got to make another powwow tonight. Singing 49 down by the riverside.
dented, the radiator steams. One headlight don't work, and the radio can scream. I got a sticker, says Indian power. I stuck it on my bumper, it'll hold my car together. We're on a circuit of an Indian dream. We don't get old, we just get That is Keith Sokola live from Studio A. Thank you so much. Keith. It was a pleasure to be here. Thank you, Ben, for coming in here. Just met my new friends. <laughs> <laughs> Your new friends. And uh, I just want to mention, we were talking about the conversation you had with Linda Lagarde Grover and on uh, Native Report, and she mentioned she remembers the car you had back when you were, uh, you know, pretty darn young up on the range and oh, you were yeah. working together. <laughs> it was a real Indian car. It was a, it was a 67 Newport Chrysler. I bought it for a hundred dollars. The eight-track player was worth more than the car. Not really, but that was a big <laughs> plus. Well, uh, again, McGwitch, thank you for being here today.